Hi and welcome to this introductory video on sound. Now have you ever noticed something about instruments? That all instruments actually have vibrating parts. Um, I mean that's clearly seen in string instruments. Okay, like guitars and violins and things like that. The sound is made by vibrating the strings. Okay, somehow plucking on the strings or stroking the strings. That's how the sound are made on strings. Um, how about on a piano? When we look at a piano, the keys of a piano causes a knock on a string. So when you press the key on a piano, it knocks a string and that causes the vibration of that string. Okay, even uh, blowing instruments like trumpets, uh, like a trumpet, um, as far as I know, the sound that is made is made by the vibrating lips of the person that is actually blowing. And it's just amplified and, and modified. The sound that you hear is modified by the shape or um, whatever the instrument does in between. Okay? And actually, even the sound you're hearing right now is the vibration of my vocal cords, which uh, looks something like this, I think. Okay, my vocal cords look something like this, and the vibration of my vocal cords causes the sound that you are hearing now. And of course, there are drums. Okay, we know that a drum makes a noise because hitting that drum causes that drum membrane to vibrate and we hear sound. Okay, so then you're probably telling me, aha, but a keyboard doesn't have vibrating parts and I say, oh yes, it does. If you look at a keyboard, it has speakers. Okay, and how does a speaker translate sound. Well, this is how it works. If you look at a speaker, you'll notice that at the back of the speaker there is a big and strong magnet. Then um, right in front of the magnet there is a coil. Now electricity is passed through this coil either in one direction or in another direction and that causes this coil to either be attracted okay, to either be attracted by the magnet or repelled by the magnet or um, and which means that it is going forward and backwards depending on the direction of the current. And that uh, coil is connected to a membrane. Okay, so that membrane can be a piece of plastic or a cardboard. I don't know really what it's made, made of. But that forward and backwards uh, motion causes the vibration of this membrane and that causes sound. Okay, now what happens is that if we look at this, the uh, vibration of this membrane causes the particles around the membrane to be contracted. They get pushed together. Okay, and they again push on the next particles. Okay, so that we have particles that are pushing into each other, some places where the particles are more dispersed, and then other places where they pushed together again because of a previous vibration. And eventually these uh, vibrations. Okay, it goes out like that. I'm just aiming for something. I'm aiming for your ear. Okay, your perfectly created ear to to receive this sound. So eventually, this sound reaches your ear drum. So on the inside of your ear, you have a little ear drum. It's not really purple, okay? But the ear drum gets now vibrated. It's also a membrane that vibrates. On the other side of your ear drum is three little bones. I don't know what they look like. I'm going to just draw them, um, called ossicles. Okay, and those ossicles are connected to a little, uh, what is called a small window. Now, what are the purpose of the ossicles? Well, they are there to amplify the vibration from the eardrum and translate it to that small window. 
Now that small window is connected to the cochlea. Again, the cochlea is not green, which is the color I'm choosing to draw it in. Okay, the cochlea is this coil. Okay, and so if, if I look at it from the top, it looks like this. Okay, that's the cochlea. And the cochlea is divided up into two parts. So if, if I were to bisect it, I don't know if I can draw by section of it, but if I were to just look at this part and I were to take a cross section of it, I'll see it's divided up into two parts. So let's draw the two parts like this. There, It's got two parts to it all the way. And in the one part, there's a fluid. Okay, so in the one part, there's a fluid. So in the top part, we have a fluid. And at the bottom part of the cochlea, we have these little hairs, these little tiny, tiny receptors. Okay. And what happens is the vibrations that's received by the eardrum is amplified by the ossicles, um, is passed through the window, and now vibrates the fluid. And the vibration from the fluid tickles or irritates these little hairs at the same frequency as the vibration is reaching them. And those little hairs interpreted via or actually um, is interpreted by optical nerves and taken to your brain, which again is not that color. It is taken to your brain and your brain is interpreting it as sound and not just as noise but in fact depending on the frequency of this disturbance it knows exactly what is the tone the note and I mean there's so many things about this that I, I, I don't even understand the least of it all I understand is that sound are vibrations of particles that eventually reaches my eardrum vibrates it vibrates the ossicles and translates it into this fluid that my receptors can interpret uh, can can translate through the optical nerve to my brain my brain knows exactly what noise what pitch what frequency it is hearing and and that's just remarkable and more than that if you go out into space and you were to just yell out in space again okay, it's just yell in space you would actually hear absolutely nothing because there's no particles in space to be vibrated so there's no sound and that is my introductory video to sound I hope you enjoyed it and found it enlightening I'll see you in the next video when we are getting closer to the theory that we are going to focus on and that's the Doppler effect see you there